coming on to my channel. Is this your first time of coming to my channel? Okay, okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. Now, welcome you guys to my channel. This is the third part of this series. The first part of this series is where we talked about our bust measurements, shoulder measurements, waist, hip. Now, for the second part of this series, we talked about our ab o measurements, bust to waist waist to bust and our that measurement that is what we did for the second part of this series now for the third part which is this tutorial we have our waist to knee length we have our shoulder to knee length we have our shoulder to waist and we have our tie measurement so now i'm going to say that the previous video which is the part one and the part two i'm going to put the link in the description box below please go ahead and watch that video because this is the third part of this series and i'm going to basically break down the series so that you guys can understand better one two so that the video is not too long for you to really get what I'm trying to say so, if it's something you're interested which I know you guys are interested okay please go ahead and watch this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like share and subscribe and let me also say that size charts is actually very important for you to have in the fashion industry and we have comprehensive size chart which is available so the link in order for you to purchase your comprehensive size chart is in the description box below and it's very very affordable and i'm even running a 10 percent discount on it please go ahead click on the link in the description box and place your order now i'm also going to say that one essence why you need a size chart and better why you need a comprehensive size chart is to enable you to be able to attend to all your customers without having a physical contact with them so i think years have gone whereby you have to take measurement directly on your clients and even if you have to do you really don't need to have to take so many measurements you guys get so with your size chart or with your size chart you'll be able to figure out all this measurement by just asking about the size so the essence of this size chart and the essence of all the series of this size chart is that at the end of this tutorial you guys are able to attend to your customers attend to your clients make dresses without having a physical contact with your customer and also to enlighten you on basic measurements you need while you are making dresses Dresses. Now I'm also going to say that all you need or all is required for you to ask your clients is just your size. What size are you? Are you a size 8? Are you a size 10? Are you a size 20? With that size chart, you should be able to attend to the bust, the waist, the hip, the dart, shoulder to knee, the time measurement, the arm o, the bust to bust, everything once you have your comprehensive size chart which i'm going to put the link of the size chart in the description box below so now let's go ahead now and attend to the topic of the day and don't forget to join me on facebook tg designs and also on instagram tg designs and also visit our website all the details are going to be in the description box below have any question in the course of this tutorial please go ahead and drop your questions in the comment section and i really want to know what size you fall into in the comment section also so let's go ahead now um the first one we have is our waist to knee now your waist to knee especially when you are making dresses that are like short gown it is also necessary for you to know your waist to knee so your waist to knee will give you an insight of the skirt measurement because of course your skirt starts from your waist and it ends in your knee so if you want to deal with a gown a gown is basically the addition of your top and your short skirt or your long skirt whatever the case might be so the addition of the two will give you a full gown do you guys get it so if you watch the previous video where we have shoulder to waist and now you have waist to knee length you will see that the addition of the two will also give you your gown length or when we get to the length part of this series you also achieve the same 
gown length for it but the comprehensive size chart which is available everything is there and the link is in the description box below so what is the waist to need for a size 14 waist to knee we have 17 inches which is the length of so waist to knee is basically the length of a skirt like i said earlier so we have 17 inches now for a size 6 we also have 17 inches for size 8 we have 17.5 we have 17.5 for size 10 we have 17.5 for size 12 we have 18 inches for size 14 we have 18 inches for size 16 we have 19 inches for size 18 we have 19 inches for size 16 we have for size 16 we have 19 inches for size 18 we have 19 inches for size 20 we have 19 inches for size 22 we have 19 inches and for size 24 we have 19 inches so we have 19 inches so basically the distance from your waist to your knee length is your gown length right from your waist to your knee this is what we have but however also note that people have choice so there are some people that they really love their skirt to be really below their knee so for that you might just add one or two inches depends on how below the knee your client wants the dress to be for some slay queens okay we love it skimpy short so i want to make like mini skirts something very short something very skimpy you also deduct from the length so that also depends on how short the person want the skirt to be so if my measurement is size 6 and it's 17 inches 17 inches is basically on my new like right on my new so if i say that i want a mini skirt it simply means that you will deduct from this 17 inches to give me my mini skirt length so the number of inches you now deduct from it will determine on how skimpy my skirt will be so if i really want it to be skimpy skimpy you can deduct two inches from this length which will make it of 15 inches for my length or you can deduct three inches it all depends on how skimpy i want it to be now these measurements are exactly on the knee however if you want your skirt length or your length to be after your knee it simply means that you are going to add to it the number of inches you add will now determine how long your skirt will be so you can add two inches you can add three inches to it it all depends what we have now is our shoulder to knee length our shoulder to knee length so the first one we have is our waist to knee length that is for your skirt which basically start from your waist right now what we have now is shoulder to knee length which is equal to your gown length your short gown length so you can either have it as your shoulder to knee or you can have it as your gown length it all depends on what you want so let's go ahead now and get that that's to need for a size 14 we have 35 inches so that's to need we have 35 inches now for size 6 we have 35 inches for size 6 also we have 35 inches for size 8 we have 36 inches for size 8 now for size 10 we have 37 inches for size 10 we have 37 inches for size 12 we have 38 inches for size 12 we have 38 inches for size 14 we have 38 inches for size 16 for size 16 we have 40 inches for size 16 for size 18 we have 41 inches for size 20 we have 41 inches 
for size 22 we have 42 inches and for size 40, 24 we have 44 inches now if you observe these measurements carefully you will also discover that there are measurements that repeat themselves across two sizes I'm also going to explain why once I'm done with the other part of this and also like previously the way we did our waist to knee length whereby you know the length of the person will determine if you are to deduct from it or if you are to add it all depends on how skimpy or how long your client wants it to be now also for your shoulder to your knee basically is also on your knee length so if the person wants the gown to be very skimpy you deduct from the 35 inches for a size 4 or a size 6 now if, the, if your client wants it to be long you know longer below the knee you add to it the number of inches you add or you deduct to your length measurement determines on how skimpy or how long you want it to be so on that note now i'm going to ask you that are you a skimpy lady or you are somewhere below the knee so let me go first for me if my dress is short is short if it's long is a long dress i really don't know how to rock somewhere below the knee or somewhere like three quarters if my dress is a short dress get it short if it's a long dress let it sweep the floor i don't know i've not really found that balance on rocking like below the knee three quarter kind of dress that is just for me personally but let me know what lady or what woman are you because i'm not going to call you a lady you're a, grow, you're a woman <laughs> in the comment section do you like it skimpy on the knee or below the knee put that that in the comment section so the next part we have now is our shoulder to waist your shoulder to your waist is necessary especially when you have to achieve a top so this will enable you to know where to attach your peplum or where to attach your flay or where to attach your pleating or where your crop top should stop so for an example if you have to make a dress like this if you have to make a top like this is not a very simple illustration if you have to make it uh, i see the way my dress my drawing is <laughs> If you have to make a drawing like this or a dress like this, a top like this, base. So if you have to make a top like this, it simply means that this upper part is going to be fitted, and then this lower part can be like your flay or your pleating or whatever design you want to put for the lower part in terms of a top, right? So what we have now, this shoulder to waist is what we want to achieve here. This shoulder to waist is what we want to achieve here. I don't know if you guys are getting this but you guys should if you don't drop your questions in the comment section and i'll still go ahead to explain better but basically if you are dealing with a top you need your shoulder to your waist to know where the basic you know basic dress will stop before you attach your flay or before you attach your pleating to the lower part of your top so the shoulder to your waist is what we have here this is what we want to achieve at this point now your shoulder to your knee if this is a gown now if this is a gown your shoulder to your knee is what we have here shoulder to knee is what we have here shoulder to waist somewhere here if you are dealing with a top is what we have here now your waist to your knee is from this part downwards so basically you discover that the essence of this series is to enable you know your shoulder to waist your waist to your length and also know your waist to knee length i hope you guys understand with this illustration i'm sure you guys will be able to understand however the comprehensive size chart is available and i'm going to put the link on how to purchase yours in the description box below please go ahead and purchase it it's to help you it's to encourage you it's to upgrade your fashion game it's to stop stressing you from taking different measurements and actually get you a very nice fitting so let's go ahead now and calculate that so i should have to waste now should have to waste for size four should have to wait for size four we have 16 should have to waste for size four we have 16 should have to waste for size six we have 16 for size 8 we have 17 inches for size 8 we have 17 inches for size 10 we have 18 inches for size 12 we have 18 
inches for size 14 we have 18.5 inches we have 18.5 inches for size 16 we have 19 inches for size 18 we have 19 inches for size 20 we have 20 inches so for size 20 we have 20 inches for size 22 we have 21 inches and for size 24 we have 22 inches so for me now i am size 6 my shoulder to my waist is usually 16 inches and another way to actually get your 16 inches is also your shoulder distance from your sh your shoulder to your to your bust and from your bust to your waist in the past one series of this video i explained shoulder to bust bust to waist in the part two rather in the part two series i explained shoulder to bust bust to waist so addition of our shoulder to bust is eight inches bust to waist is eight inches by the time you add the two of them together you have 16 inches so when you come here now you also see that your shoulder to waist is also 16 inches by the time you have your 8 inches plus your 8 inches you have 16 inches now this 16 inches now is also what we have for our shoulder to waist you can see that it is correct right now if you want to have a gown you are dealing with a gown now so what you have to do now is from your waist to your sh your waist to your knee length is what waist to knee length is 17 inches waist to knee length we have 17 inches waist to knee we have 17 inches bust to waist we've calculated that 16 inches right so 17 plus 16 what are we going to have we have 33 inches we have 33 inches plus your sewing allowance which is two inches we have 35 inches so what do we have for our shoulder to knee length 35 inches correct or not correct you can see it's correct so let me explain it again calm down if you didn't get what i said take a breath calm down i will explain it again and you will get it so i'm going to draw it again i'm going to draw it again so this is just very simple a very simple illustration here A very simple illustration here now this is what our shoulder measurement this is what our bust measurement I'm going to use B this is what our waist measurement and this is our gown length or your hip measurement you know your gown length this is your gown length your hip measurement is somewhere here measurement is somewhere in the middle right now in the previous series in the previous series which is the second series we said that our uh, shoulder to bust shoulder to bust is nine inches shoulder to bust is nine inches depend on the measurement depend on your size so let me use the previous size i used earlier so now we have eight inches eight inches i want to use the same size we have eight inches which is size six so we are dealing with a size six now which is size six we have eight inches distance from your bust to waist distance from your bust to waist like we said in the part two of this series is eight inches it's eight inches now waist to gown length which is what we have in the third part of this video waist to knee length we have what 17 inches we have 17 inches so 8 plus 8 we have 16 plus 17 we have 33 plus 2 inches for our sewing allowance we have 35 so your shoulder to your knee length is equal to 35 inches so you will discover that it is basically like your addition of one step to the other that comprises of a particular gown and that is the essence why you need to watch the previous videos and that is the reason why you also need to order for your comprehensive size chart the link is in the description box below i cannot let the emphasis enough on the size chart 
now let's take another example this is all we have now no matter the example you take you are going to have the same results so in the previous video we talked about the first part of this tutorial we talked about our bust measurement waist measurement and our hip that will enable you to know your shoulder measurement bust to waist waist to hip which is the second part of this series why the third part is where we now talk about the distance from your waist to your knee length your shoulder to your knee length and your shoulder to your waist so you can see that it is actually you can see that it is actually a step to step so the next one now we have is our tie measurements I actually wrote the tie measurements here but as you can see the board is actually filled up so I'm going to add the tie measurements now to the next series which is going to be the part four of this tutorial and you need to watch it so now i'm going to add this um, time measurement to the part four and i'm basically going to explain something else in this video so one thing you also notice that i didn't say in this video but i mentioned it in the part two part of the video is that you will discover that some measurements follows themselves like it's like the measurements are repeating themselves in some in some sizes this is because sometimes our sizes are being graded when i mean graded is that somebody might say i'm a small size i'm a medium size i'm an extra large extra extra large or extra 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 large no matter what you are beautiful you are unique your body is perfect you have a perfect shape don't feel discouraged and don't be body shamed okay now this sizes or sizes generally are grouped into different sizes so our size 4 is also known as small i'm going to just write it here because of space our size 4 is known as small our size 6 to 8 is known as small why size 4 some people call it extra small extra small is size 4 why size 6 to 8 is small size 10 to 14 is your medium size size 16 and 18 is your large 16 and 18 size 16 to 18 is large size 20 to 22 extra large size 24 extra extra large so either you're a small size so if somebody says oh i'm a small size it simply means that the person falls between size 6 to size 8 i'm a medium size size 10 12 and 14 and most times when you are most times when you are making dresses with fabrics that are stretchy each size are going to fall under the same category so what i mean by that is this a stretchy fabric or a free dress when you deal with a medium size a medium size dress is going to fit this size 10 size 12 and size 14 because the fabric is either stretchy or is a maxi dress so for dresses that are either stretchy or maxi dress you can basically produce your dress based on how they are grouped so if you are making a dress now for your extra large it's also going to fit in for a size 16 and it's also going to fit in for a size 18 if you are making a dress for sorry large if you're making a dress for an extra extra large it's going to fit in for a size 20 and going to fit in for a size 24 even though their bust is different their waist is different their hip is different it's because they fall under the same category and because your fabric is either stretchy or is a maxi dress that is the reason why it's going to fit in but if what you are making is a fitted dress please stick to the exact size of the clients you are working with so i hope this i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know your size in the comment section let me know if you have any questions let me know if you guys really understood it i'm sure you guys did if you don't please go ahead and put it down in the comment section and also let me know what size you fall into and don't forget to get your comprehensive size chart the link is going to be in the description box below and i am running discounts on the size chart so thanks so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video I'll definitely see you guys in this past four of this series. I love you. Bye.